Welcome to this video about running the Kerno F classifier. Um, the Kerno F classifier is probably the reason why you're using FPOD because here's some data. It takes the raw data in the FP1 file and pulls out of it the click trains. And it does this really quite accurately. Um, and that saves a vast amount of time. So if we go to the analysis page for file one, one of the FP, you've got 2.8 million clicks in that file. File three, 140,000. So that's five or six percent. So it's rejected 95 percent and put into the FP3 file this five percent that is the um, the clicks that are in trains. So um, and if we just zoom in on, on this a little bit, we can sort of see. Um, so there's all these clicks going on here. Um, and that's in the, the background noise. And then there are some click trains thrown in amongst them. And it's the Kerno F classifier that pulls these out. OK, so you get your FP1 file by reading the SD card. You then go to the trains page and you're going to click detect click trains in FP1 files. Um, you, if you're keeping your, your FP1 files in one directory, which is a good idea, you can just click skip if FP3 exists and select all the files in the directory and um, it will pick out the ones that haven't been run through the classifier and, and do that. Um, if you're, say, working in a river, you may know that you've got no narrowband high frequency species and maybe no boat zones. So you can exclude them, and that helps the classifier because within a minute, or in fact a slightly longer period, there is a bias created by the presence of any one of these against the presence of the others. And uh, if you know it, it doesn't exist, it's kind of helpful to the classifier. And just occasionally, there may be a case for modifying some of these things in the advanced kernel F settings. Mostly it'll be setting the amplitude to look at clicks only those greater than, say, 40 on the amplitude scale. If you are using this, then you have to experiment to find out whether it really helps. And you have to validate the, the results to find out if it did help. Then you should save the current train classifier settings to a .fpt file so that you can reuse them consistently. OK, but generally speaking, you don't even look at that. You just click this button and you pick the FP1 files of interest um, and away it goes and it gives you some feedback so that maroon color that means it found some sonar probably the boat that put the the pod down and then it's getting a mixture of nbhf and other cetaceans so that'll be franciscana and these will be guiana dolphins in babatonga bay in brazil thanks to uh, renan paytach for the the data here um and it's completed that and it's put a report in the result. This report is quite complicated. It is quite interesting, at least to me at least, but the figures are not exact. So it's just like for interest only. So you can clear that. And now you can open a file set and the name is there already. Um, and we, we've got these FP3 files which have just been generated while uh, recording this video. Um, and they will basically oh, look the same. Uh, it's a screen, five minutes show from start uh, as it did before. OK, so um, that's really all there is to it, except that once you've got that FP3, you can't update the FP3 version. This just smooths the uh, clicks per second 
display. We, we could just have a look at that if we make it show us clicks per second, show from start, show next screen. Um, make it show from start, show next screen. I've got it set to look for 500 clicks in a screen. So um, here we are. This is a click train. Okay, and the clicks per second is quite ragged there. So hopefully this will be improved. So let's try this. Update FP3 version. We'll select the FP3. Let's open that. It's done that. Um, files. Open a file set. It'll be the same file set. Refresh screen so there we are we're back to the same screen and you can see what was a quite jagged line there is now smoothed out and the blue green is when the click rate's rising the red is when it's falling and this is this very fast click train down here um so that's useful particularly if you're studying social communication or uh feeding buzzes um so it's useful to do that okay that's basically all i have to say hope it was useful thank you